everyone collectively say thanks NFL for using AI bots in their scheduling this year. They scheduled six teams on a bye in week 13, a very critical week for all of us that play fantasy football. But there has to be a way to ease the pain a little bit from missing so many guys this week. What could we do? How about we give things away? What is going on, Headliner Nation? Hopefully everyone's doing well out there today. We're doing our quick and dirty top 30 wide receivers for week 13 fantasy football. But we're not going to be seeing a lot of the names here that we're used to seeing at the top of the rankings because they're not playing. No Stephon Diggs, no DJ Moore, no Devontae Adams, Jordan Addison. They're not available to us here this week. But like I teased in my intro, I have a way to ease the pain just a little bit. We give things away almost every week of the year around here, so let's do it some more. I have in my possession right here a signed Jordan Addison Vikings football. This thing is pretty sweet. I would like to put this up on my shelf right behind me somewhere, but I won't. I'll go ahead and I'll give this away to the community. How do you get in on that giveaway? It's super simple. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below on this video. Let me know that you're interested and then be sure to set up a free account over at pristineauction.com using the referral code headliners. Then in this show next week, I'll select a random winner from the comment section of this video and announce it there in week 14. Looking forward to giving this away to somebody, but I want to do more. But I really want to see what you guys are buying out there on Pristine Auction. I'm really curious to see what you guys are walking away with because we see comments on videos all the time of auctions that people are winning. So I have right here a separate giveaway. This one is going to run from now till Christmas. The week of Christmas in this wide receiver rankings video, I will announce the winner, but I have a signed Justin Herbert Funko Pop right here. If you've watched my videos for a while, you can see I got a ton of these things behind me. What I don't have is a signed Justin Herbert Funko Funko Pop right here. Now, this giveaway is going to be done a little bit differently because like I said, I want to see what you guys are winning over at Pristine Auction yourselves and some of these great deals that you're getting. So I want to see some screenshots. Now, no, I don't want to see all your personal information. I just want a little screenshot of the item that you won and how much did you win it for. It'll be a lot of fun between now and Christmas to see what kind of deals you guys actually got there on pristineauction.com. Then take those screenshots, send it to me at info at thefantasyheadliners.com. In the title of that email, just put Herbert giveaway. Then the week of Christmas, I'll pull up all of my emails that have that title and we'll go ahead and pick a random winner. I have a feeling that's going to be a lot of fun to see between now and the holidays. I'm anxious to see what kind of Christmas presents you guys are able to get at a ridiculously low price. So be sure to head over to pristineauction.com. Get yourself a free account. Use the referral code headliners when you do so and then walk away with some amazing Christmas gifts. But all right, let's go ahead and dive into some rankings now. The top of the list, not very surprising at number one in week 13. It's got to be Tyreek Hill. As much as it sucks to have six teams on a bye this week, what doesn't suck is having Tyreek Hill playing against the Washington Commandos, arguably one of the worst secondaries in football, Tyreek at number one. Number two, it's Amon Ross St. Brown. Hashtag Doomtar down below in the comment section with a matchup going up against New Orleans. A New Orleans defense that does not have Marshawn Lattimore and really doesn't matter because Amon Ross been putting up points on everyone this season. Number three, it's Keenan Allen. There's no one else to throw the ball to in LA and no opposing defenses can stop Keenan Allen. Now he gets a great match matchup going up against New England. He's at number three. Number four, it's CeeDee Lamb. He's had a couple down weeks here as of late, but he keeps scoring touchdowns. Got a great matchup this week at home against Seattle, so he's at number four. Number five is A.J. Brown and what I would think is the game of the week against the San Francisco 49ers. It's a lot easier to throw on San Fran than it is to run on them. A.J. Brown's going to be at number five. Number six, it's Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home against the Carolina Panthers. He is by far the most consistent weapon in this offense, and each and every week, he's getting shots down the field. Because of that, he's at number six. Number seven, it's Michael Pittman. He's really turning into a super safe wide receiver each and every week that's starting to get a little bit of a decent ceiling. Average almost 10 targets a week. You better believe I got him right here at number seven in a great matchup going up against Tennessee. Number eight, it's Jalen Waddle. If that's such a great matchup for Tyreek Hill, you better believe it's a great matchup for Jalen Waddle as well. Last week was only the second week of the season that both Waddle and Hill had 100 yards receiving in the same game. I have a feeling they do it again this week, so Waddle's at number Number eight. Number nine, it's Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers in that potential shootout against Philadelphia. Way easier to throw on Philly than run on Philly, so Ayuk's at number nine. Number 10, his opponent in that game, Devontae Smith. As of right now, we do not know whether or not we're going to have Dallas Goder, which means we're going to have a whole lot of Devontae Smith once again. He's at number 10. 11, it's Tank Dell of the Houston Texans. 
He's got a matchup going up against Denver. Not the easiest of matchups because Denver does not suck anymore. But I do expect Patrick Sertan to spend most of his time over on Nico Collins, and I expect Tank Dell to feast once again. So he's at number 11. Number 12, this is where I have Debo Samuel. Yes, all four of the main wide receivers in this matchup inside my top 12. Jeez, I hope there's a lot of offense in this game or this is not going to go very well. But with six teams on by and the potential offense we could see here, I got Debo at 12. 13 is Jamar Chase. Continues to have a safe floor with Jake Browning, but the ceiling is so much lower than it was with Joe Burrow. But this matchup going up against Jacksonville is a good one, and Chase is going to get himself 10-plus targets again. He's at 13. 14, Cortland Sutton. This may be the highest I've ranked him all season long, but in a matchup going up against Houston, I would expect to see Cortland Sutton get another opportunity or two at a touchdown. He continues to score them almost every single week. I got him at 14. 15, it's Calvin Ridley. He's producing like a wide receiver one. He's producing like we expected when we started the season. Now he has a matchup Monday night football in the bright lights against Cincinnati. I got him at 15. 16, it's Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints. He's going up against the Detroit Lions, and why isn't he high? Well, he's currently in concussion protocol and has not yet been cleared to play this week. Now, if we head into the weekend and he's fully cleared, good to go, he's probably going to go up inside my top 12. It's just a great matchup going up against Detroit, and with all the injuries in New Orleans, Chris Olave could easily see 10-plus targets there, if healthy. 17, it's Adam Thielen of the Carolina Panthers. We have a new coaching staff in Carolina. Does that mean Bryce Young is all of a sudden the best quarterback in football? No, this offense is probably still going to struggle, but this matchup is great. Tampa Bay is one of the easiest matchups for fantasy wide receivers, and you have to think that with a new coaching staff in Carolina, they're going to force feed what they know works, and all that is right now is Adam Thielen, so he's at 17. 18 is Christian Kirk. His floor remains super safe. Going to hover right around 10 fantasy points a game. The issue is, with Calvin Ridley taking a step forward, Christian Kirk's ceiling has come down, and he's really not going over 11, 12 fantasy points in a game. Now, that's not bad by any means, but it just makes him a mid-wide receiver, too. Number 19, it's DK Metcalf in a difficult matchup going up against the Dallas Cowboys Thursday night football. DK continues to see almost nine targets a game, the highest among all wide receivers in Seattle. Plus, he's top 12 in the league among all wide receivers receivers and deep targets and red zone targets. That's why I got to keep him inside the top 20 at number 19. Number 20, it's Terry McLaurin of the Washington Commanders. I expect Washington to get down early and have to throw a ton. Basically the same thing that happens every week in Washington. The issue is we got three wide receivers there and none of them are consistent. Now, while I said in my wide receiver video that I believe Curtis Samuel is safer, the ceiling is still going to be higher for Terry McLaurin because it doesn't take very many big plays to have a great fantasy day. When you're looking at big plays in this offense, it's still Terry McLaurin. That's why he's at number 20. Number 21, it's Nico Collins. I mentioned when we talked about Tank Dell earlier that Nico Collins could see a lot of Patrick Sertan. If that's the case, we had to temper expectations and put him at 21. 22 is DeAndre Hopkins of the Tennessee Titans, a matchup going up against the Indianapolis Colts, and it seems like forever ago that D-Hop had that huge three-touchdown game. In fact, since that game, he's borderline not even been fantasy startable and has dropped down the rankings every week since he's sitting at 22. 23, his opponent in that game, Josh Downs of the Indianapolis Colts going up against Tennessee, a Tennessee defense that is much easier to throw on than run on. And Josh Downs had 13 targets last week. Didn't really do a whole lot with it, but if we're going to see volume like that going to this rookie wide receiver down the stretch, he's got to be at least a low-end wide receiver too. Got him at 23. 24, it's Puka Chu, Puka Nakua of the Los Angeles Rams. A very difficult matchup going up against Cleveland, and I think we can all agree now that Puka and Cooper Cup do not look 100 percent healthy. These guys are struggling to go over six fantasy points a game over the last month of the season. And because of that, that's why we've dropped them lower than they have been all year long. Puka at 24. 25 is Rasheed Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs in a matchup going up against Green Bay. Jair Alexander still questionable to play once again this week. And Rasheed Rice, we all saw last week, is the most talented wide receiver on this roster. When they make a conscious effort to get him the football, he makes big plays happen. Hoping they can build off the momentum of week 12, got him at 25. 26, it's Jaden Reed of the Green Bay Packers in a difficult matchup going up against Kansas City. But when you look at that overall Green Bay offense, they're really finding a lot of success through the air. Thankfully, because their running game is absolutely tore up with injuries between Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Jaden Reed continues to find the end zone, and for that reason, he's at 26. 27, this is where I have Cooper Cup in that matchup going up against Cleveland. Really looked awful over the last month or so of the season, and you can tell he's not healthy. Add in the fact now of the difficult matchup, I got Cooper Cup down at 27, and it makes me sick. 28, it's Brandon Cooks of the Dallas Cowboys playing Thursday night football. Now, Brandon Cooks is not getting huge volume, but what he is getting is an opportunity 
opportunity multiple times a week at big plays. And not just big plays, touchdowns as well. In a game in which I see Dallas moving the ball through the air pretty consistently, I got Brandon Cooks at 28. 29, it's Garrett Wilson. He gets to endure another week of Tim Boyle. I know we're all super pumped about it. But one thing we can say is they're going to continue to give this guy over 10 targets a week. If he can pile up around eight receptions or so in a PPR scoring league, he's definitely somebody who's still startable, so he's at 29. And then 30, it's George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, we all know that Pickens, Deontay Johnson, they haven't done anything in weeks, but what we do also know is that Deontay Johnson basically gave up on the field at times in week 12. And now they get a great matchup going up against Arizona. Do not be surprised if we see a big touchdown play to George Pickens in week 13 and that's why he's at number 30. But just like we always do, because I'm a man of the people, we got a few guys on the outside looking in, and I say this almost every single week. I hope people are actually listening to it. After you get around wide receiver 25 or so, there's literally 15 to 20 names that are basically interchangeable. That's how deep the wide receiver position is here in 2023. Even in a week with six teams on by, I still have another eight to 10 names that deserve possibly a top 30 ranking. So here's a list of those players. They're in no specific order. Right here, top of the list, it's Curtis Samuel. I mentioned a little bit earlier when we were talking about Terry McLaurin that Curtis Samuel could be the safest option in this offense this week. He could rack up a lot of receptions underneath and really help you from a PPR standpoint. What about Marquise Hollywood Brown? Finally had double-digit targets last week, but didn't do a whole lot with them. Now we're starting to see a whole lot more Greg Dortch and rookie wide receiver Michael Wilson could be on his way back as well. How about Drake London? It's, this is more so an Atlanta offense problem and not a Drake London problem, but he has a super difficult matchup this week going up against the Jets, and I, I expect him to be covered in a lot of sauce. Then we got Tyler Lockett, the Seattle Seahawks in that matchup, that tough matchup, Thursday night football going up against Dallas. Then we got Deontay Johnson, who, like I said, basically gave up on his team. It looked like at times in week 12, but that matchup is great going up against Arizona. Amari Cooper, he's not in my top 30 because he's currently dealing with a rib cage injury. We don't even know right now if he's going to be playing or not, but he's definitely a name to pay attention to. What about Chris Godwin? Chris Godwin has had like three fantasy viable days all year long, but not a bad matchup for him going up against Carolina. And we got Demario Douglas, who's banged up himself, and we don't even know who the starting quarterback is going to be in New England just yet. Sounds like it could be Bailey Zappi. Christian Watson coming off his best game of the year, but a very difficult matchup for him going up against Kansas City. You have to think that that Kansas City defense is going to make a conscious effort to not let Christian Watson beat them deep down the field. And then Jahan Dotson, a great matchup going up against Miami. More than likely, Jalen Ramsey is he going to spend some time on Terry McLaurin? Maybe we get a big play out of Jahan Dotson. He just doesn't see enough volume consistently to really trust enough to throw him really high up in my rankings. But that's going to go ahead and do it for my quick and dirty top 30 wide receivers here for week 13 fantasy football. Hopefully you have all the information you need now between the start and sit videos and these rankings to make your final lineup decisions. We are right around the corner from the fantasy playoffs and now is must win territory. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for the day. Hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And then most importantly, do your part to make the world a better place. Nation. I'm a